Uganda is best known for harboring a huge number of alcohol consumers who ingest various types of alcohol, ranging from bottled beers, wines, and spirits to locally manufactured brews like Ajono, which is common in Teso sub region, Kweti, and Tonto, which are mainly made in the central region. A tour around most urban and rural areas drives one's attention to the thriving trade in local brew, which attracts questions whether this is the only alternative source of income for people involved in the local alcohol business, or is it that easy to produce local brew, such as Toronto? In Loyal District, Toronto is the commonest local brew and is made using bananas, which are locally called Kayinja. Toronto is consumed at weddings, introductions, and burials. I seek to find out the procedures and processes involved in making the mad purpose drink. On a sunny day, I embarked upon more than 30 km journey to Kiriambide village in the well district, north of Kampala. The task is meeting Mr. Sebagala Ben, a famous Tonto maker who has spent over 30 years in local brewing. On reaching his home, my eyes are greeted by a huge plantation where Sebagala aves low banners, the chief material for making Tonto. <laughs> He cuts down several branches of Kainja banners, which are transported home using a bicycle. The fruits are then plucked off and placed on top of the wooden structure, covered with polythene and dry banana leaves to trap heat. Smoke is then administered for about five days to quicken the ripening process and add the aroma to the final product. To reduce overheating, burning wood is blended with wet burner stems. Alternatively, the burners can also be buried underground to fasten ripening. After six days, Sebagara's low material is now yellow in color, indicating ripeness. The ripe burners are picked and put into a wooden bowl, ready to be smashed by stamping using bare feet. The stamping is done by Sebagara's aide, Kasule Salongo, who washes his feet before he steps into the bowl. The ripe burners are smashed into a polygenic state. The process is tiresome, but Kasule says he is used and that he has been doing it for quite some time. He says that Ministry of Health awarded him a certificate indicating that his tasks do not pose a health threat to the product. <laughs> Sebagala also trusts the process as long as the person involved in smashing and stamping the ripe burners washes his or her feet. Again, the Oksogola, another Burundi, we get in the Bitukula, the Natandika Okulin Yamabi Dag. At this point, fresh spear grass is introduced, cut and chopped into sizable pieces and mixed with smashed ripe burners to ease the squeezing out of juice. About 7 gallons of water is added to the bowl to dilute the concubana juice. A big saucepan is placed in a slanting position beside the wooden bowl and fresh banana leaves are laid horizontally to enable juice to flow to the saucepan while the banana grass is squeezed. To ensure that no solid elements or glass residue slips down the saucepan, spear grass is placed on top of the banana leaves and this acts as a sieve. The combination of smashed burners, spear grass and water is placed on the channel and the dilute juice freely flows into the saucepan. Within minutes, the saucepan gets filled and the juice is drawn and put onto plastic drum or jelly cans. To squeeze juice entirely, Kasura stands right on top of the smashed mixture of ripe bananas and spear grass, supporting himself with a wooden pole, while gently pressing the mixture as juice continues to flow into the saucepan. The size of the mixture decreases as Kasura continues turning and squeezing out any hidden juice. 
While the process of squeezing is being finalized, Sebagala's son and daughter carried out to grinding of sorghum on a wooden flat log. This sorghum is first fried to give it an aroma before it's mixed with juice as yeast. The mixing is done on the same bowl where the ripe bananas were smashed. The mixture of juice and sorghum is then covered with fresh banana leaves, polythene paper and left to ferment for 24 hours. At exactly 1 p.m., Sebagala and his son return to uncover the fermented juice, which is called tonto. The sorghum crumbs are carefully removed and used for feeding poultry and pigs. Tonto is then filled in two jerry cans from different customers. As the filling continues, I took time off the camera to test the now ready product. The final product is moderately sweet and the bubbling form indicates that Tonto has an alcoholic element. The jerry cans are loaded onto the motorcycle for transportation to the market. Sebagala manoeuvres through the narrow roads to deliver his product to the nearest market. He safely arrives at the Busua Trading Center, loaded with Tonto. With the help of his customers, Sebagala offloads the Tonto, which is then stored and sold at the local bar. By the time of delivery, already people were in bars sipping their favorite drinks while sharing stories on family issues and politics. A jelly can of Tonto costs about 25,000 to 50,000 shillings, while a glass goes for 1,000 shillings. The Tonto business has sustained Sebagala's life needs, such as feeding. He is also raising fees for his son, who is in senior TD. <laughs> Irango mwana mukuru ageza ku university nenga sanga nyo buzibu mukubwe mukuba werera bonna To be an expert in tonto making one has to be mentored committed and hard working Sebaga learned tonto making from his mother Ruth Namondo The aged lady appreciates the work of her son since he caters for her well-being Nalira mu abavubuka bachabo ababa leke ibibanya asita kangeze bugeza ku gamba ngabazadi bakuleke de kibanya so Like any other business, Sebagala's tonto making activities are still fought with the numerous challenges which he continues fighting to avoid learning out of finances. Common bacteria diseases such as banana bacteria wilt is a major threat to the Sebagala's banana plantation. To avert the banana bacteria wilt, which is caused by the frying insects, Sebagala and other kinds of banana growers devised a simple solution. The solution involves cutting off the flower from banana plants after the banana fruits have devolved into a reasonable size. Sebagala urges agricultural researchers to find lasting solutions against the banana bacterial virus. Additionally, the locals who cut the banana leaves for cooking reduce on the productivity of Sebagala's banana plantation. At 
unlike other dangerous locally made alcohol, Tonto doesn't pose graveside effects such as liver failure, loss of sight, or death to its customers. Sebagara pays taxes on his Tonto business. He is free to expand and modernize his business to the level of exportation. He urges the youth to borrow a leaf from him and utilize the potential of, of controlled local brewing in uplifting their livelihood. <laughs> Sewan Campbell Francis, Macaulay University.